Good morning all, may the Lord bless you. May his presence be with you. Thank you for joining us here as we continue to look at the Father's providence. And I often wonder what you think is the uh, most important part of the Father's providence for us. And uh, yeah, I think we can be looking at that today. So bless you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. His providence, Ruach HaKodesh. And Ruach is the Hebrew word for breath and HaKodesh means holy. So what we are talking about is his Holy Spirit. Wow. And have you ever thought of the Holy Spirit as the Father's providence? Hmm. So let's just run a summary again of the what the Father's providence is. It's defined as the protective care of God as a spiritual power, the Father's timely preparation for future eventualities. I love that when we think of the stages in, in the world that we are going through at the moment, that what is happening around the world, and the Father's sustaining and guiding human destiny. Wow, we need that, don't we? And his providence is his precious Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is inseparable from the involvement in our lives, irrespective of our free will. Now, when you look at that statement, and you th link of just the previous slide of his providence, you can see that God is co continually involved in our lives, in the world, irrespective of our free will. And last time we were uh, together, we were looking at and asking the question about free will and his sovereignty. Oh, by the way, I see there's an R missing over there. The Holy Spirit is involved in bringing order and preventing chaos. The Holy Spirit is his providence. And so the Father's providence in his creation. So Ruach, the word Ruach, appears 380 times in the Old Testament. And it refers to the breath of the Father. So it's the breath. The Holy Spirit is his breath. The root word in the Hebrew has the meaning to breathe out with a force or fiercely. And you think of the Father breathing out. And as he breathes out, creation happens. Just an awesome picture of that. When Ruach HaKodesh is directly combined with Yahweh or Elohim, it indicates a powerful creative force or forceful action of the Father. So when you look in the Old Testament and you talk about uh, his breath and, it's, and the words include Yahweh or Elohim, it is really talking about this creative force of the Father. Whenever scripture refers to the breath of God, we may understand this is the Father's Holy Spirit. So it's interesting when you look at your scriptures and you look at those words and you think about the breath and it talks about the breath of the Father, we're talking about Ruach HaKodesh. Just let's look at that picture. Isn't it a lovely picture? And Think what scripture this reminds you of. Depending upon the context, Ruach can be understood as the Father's expressing himself as creating, providing, and managing his creation 
in a multitude of different ways. This is his general providence. And these may be experienced as his powerful creative energy, his personality, his courage, his strength, his life-giving energy, his overpowering natural and physical uh, events, his overpowering natural and physical events, his superhuman strength as a superhuman strength, his divine inspiration, his empowering and equipping, and his displeasure and anger. And we experience this, and I'll make this statement, through Ruach HaKodesh, which is his breath in our lives. The earth was formless and void, or a waste and emptiness. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, primeval ocean that covered the unformed earth. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. And that is from Genesis 1 verse 2, which I'm pretty sure you all recognized. The law, the heavens were made by the word and utterance of the Lord and all the stars by the breath, ruach, of his mouth. So we can see that create, creation is through this exhalation of power, which we know as ruach hakodesh, the Holy Spirit. And that is from Psalm 33, verse 6. The Father's providence in sustaining creation. You send out your spirit, Ruach. They are created. You renew the face of the ground. And you can see how the Holy Spirit is this power of our Heavenly Father in action. And that's from Psalm 104, verse 30. You send out your spirit, Ruach. They are created. You renew the face of the ground. And the word renew is the word chadash. In Hebrew, meaning to make new or repair. So we can see the Holy Spirit working in creation. The emphasis is on the Father's eternal inherent power that exists, that is existing in the spirit realm, manifesting in the carnal realm. But we are in the carnal realm, so we see this in the carnal realm. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot in the spirit realm that we don't see. So the emphasis is on the Father's eternal inherent power that is existing in the spirit realm, which we now experience in the carnal realm. Because the Father is eternal, Ruach HaKodesh is and must be eternal. And in 1 John 5 verse 20, it is written, and we have seen and know by personal experience that the Son of God has actually come into this world and has given us understanding and insight so that we may progressively and personally know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in the Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So scripture tells us that this life, this life that we have in us, that life that we see in the world is an eternal life. 
Ruach HaKodesh gives us life. And that is written here in Genesis 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed, that is, created the body of man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. Oh, isn't that such a wonderful scripture when you look at that what the father did as he breathed Ruach HaKodesh himself into Adam his life and a lot of these scriptures are confirmed here in Job and here is Job declaring that it is Ruach HaKodesh that is sustaining him as long as my life is within me and the breath of God is still in my nostrils my lips will not speak unjustly nor my tongue utter deceit so this is Job really lamenting at the time but he will not uh, according with his, his three uh, uh, what were they? The three comforters. Yes. The three comforters saying, oh, this is God. Is this, this is God. And he said, no, 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 it's not God. And he said, as long as my life is within me, which life? The breath of God. Ruach in him. Job continues this, this declaration of Ruach HaKodesh being the life in him. But there is a vital force and a spirit of intelligence in man. The breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. And here it is in Job 32 verse 8. And again Job says, the spirit of God has made me. And the breath of Almighty gives me life, which inspires me. And what we are looking at here is how we have been created through the breath of God, which is Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And that is from Job 33, verse 4. It is the Father's Holy Spirit that sustains us. If God should determine to do so, and if he should gather to himself, that is, withdraw from man his life-giving spirit and his breath, all flesh would perish together and man would return to dust. And that is an incredible statement when you look at that, because we're not talking about saved and unsaved people that have come to know the Lord at all. We are just talking about the providence of the Father through the person of the Holy Spirit. And should God determine to do, to do so, if he should gather to himself, that is withdraw from man his life-giving spirit and breath, we become nothing. And I, as I've studied this, this has left me with a much more uh, 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 awe of all of creation. And that here I am on planet Earth by his divine providence. The Heavenly Father did two things when he created man. The Father formed us from the dust of the ground. The Father breathed his own breath into us inside of me inside of you is this breath Ruach HaKodesh. this distinguishes us from all other creatures we did not involve under the influence of blind meaningless forces accidental physics or chemistry the Father created the substances. The Father used those substances to create us, to create man. 
then the Father breathed his own breath, his Holy Spirit breath into us. This just gives me such a greater appreciation of mankind, be it a little bit uh, of peace most of the time. Ruach HaKadosh is the life and power of the Father. Given to us to give us life. The Hebrew word for spirit is Ruach, which means wind, breath, air, spirit. The life of God lives on and on. The non-physical part of man was designed to live eternally. And the non-physical part, I'm talking about our spirits and our souls. That part was designed to live eternally. We know that our physical bodies deteriorate and uh, get left behind while we go on to something greater. There's a words written there, the Spirit of God breathes in me. Our lives are a demonstration of the Father's providence. Have you ever thought of that? You, me, we are a demonstration of the Father's providence. The only question is how will we live this God-given life? Just pause on that. This is one of my scriptures that I uh, really like to make my own. Whether I ever fully achieved it, certainly not. But it is my desire. I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in him, I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me and that's from Galatians 2.20 and in closing the question for today and it was a puzzling question for me as I thought about this Ruach HaKodesh inside of every human being no human being can exist without the breath of the Father in them. So, what do you think is the difference between the Father's Ruach HaKodesh life in us and being filled with the Holy Spirit? Interesting question. Thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you, be gracious to you. Make his face shine upon you and give you shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking, nothing broken. And I pray this over you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.